Hi, I'm Sean Charlesworth. And I'm Jeremy Williams. I'm the 3D printing and fabrication specialist for testing. I like to tinker with code and electronics. This show is about making things. It's about the journey from the computer screen to something that you can actually hold in your hands, from bits to atoms. Sean. Yes. I just got back from the world's biggest pinball tournament in the history of the world. That sounds awesome. It was awesome. It's called Pinburg. Pin is this a... Guess where it is. It's gotta be Pittsburgh, right? <laughs> ah, that's my home state. Nice. Really? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm from Altoona. It's just a little bit east of that. Oh, cool. Well, it, this was an amazing event. It was 800 people. Everybody got together, had the best time, all skill levels, just a social experience. For two days, we played nonstop, like 14 hours a day. <laughs> That's okay. a lot of pinball. Yeah, it's a lot of pinball. <laughs> and then if you're good enough, you like keep playing in the third day for the finals. I'm not good enough. And you were competing. You were actually competing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Had yeah. a great time. So good. I've got pinball on the mind. And I, and I was thinking, maybe it would be feel good to go back to my roots and make a pinball mod, which is how like I got started in this. I would love thing. to do that. I would love your help with that. So I was actually at, at League, as one is on Wednesday nights. <laughs> I was at Pinball League. And, and I noticed that the guy who, who owns the shop, he has an antique stoplight. And it's it's beautiful. It's like an actual like a big one. Actual stoplight, yeah, like from the back in the day. Okay. You know, red, uh, yellow, green, and it's gorgeous. It's got a stand. It's perfect height. It's standing right next to like some space themed game. It makes no sense. Okay. I'm thinking that would look great if it was tied into the stoplight of a game like High Speed. Now, do you know about this game? No, no, it's fill me in. High Speed is a groundbreaking game from 1986 by this guy named Steve Ritchie. Okay. And it's, it's thought of as one of those games that, that first introduced the idea of a story into pinball games. All you have to do is, is make the light turn red mm -hmm. and then run a red light. <laughs> that's the story. Okay. But, but it's the first time that a game really had that kind of an arc. <laughs> so, so that's where like you, you're hitting uh, certain targets in sequence to like make something, something happen? Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Exactly. The only problem is this arcade does not have high speed. But someone brought to my attention, they do have Getaway, High Speed 2. <laughs> and in Getaway, yes. it's basically the same story. Right. But it has an even bigger, more, uh, you know, uh, prominent stoplight in the game, uh -huh. which would be perfect. So what we would want to do is, like, tie that to the actual stoplight and just move the game next to it. <laughs> That'd be awesome. It'd be the ultimate, <laughs> ultimate Getaway mod. Yeah. Uh, I cannot imagine that they say no to this. No, no, no. They have said yes to this. In <laughs> fact, they are, they love this idea. Yeah. So it's perfect synergy. Um, so what we would have to do is uh, basically go there and tie the lights in the back pinball game. Oh, yeah, you got a pinball arcade? Yeah, you got oh, a pinball man. arcade. So, All right. yeah, okay. put a day aside, <laughs> go to pinball arcade, tie the lights in the pinball game to some relays. Okay. Now, I've never actually worked with relays, especially considering this is pinball, it's kind of ironic. Relays were all, what all, all through because they're they're basically acting as an on-off switch. Exactly right. right. Yeah, and back in the day, like before pinball games had computers in them, uh -huh. they were all relay driven. It was just relay logic throughout. <laughs> it was cascading relays that Amazing. would create the rule sets, and it's actually really impressive how they did that. But I've never played with them. Okay. But what what they allow you to do is to, as you said, like trigger a circuit. Mm -hmm that's isolated from your trigger signal. So you can apply a small amount of voltage to a relay, which closes a circuit, and you can run high voltage through. So hmm. we're, we're actually gonna run 120 volt wall okay, socket right, voltage, yeah. AC, into, the, into these lights, and we'll trigger that using the small amount of voltage that we get from the lights themselves in the game. Okay, cool. So we don't have to tie into the, to the, like, the circuit boards or anything. Yeah, we'll just tap right into the bulbs, use that voltage to trigger Solid state relays. Now, I mean, how does that work? Because usually I'm thinking the relays are like, you know, the big square, click, 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 click. You actually see the little, the little spring switch in there that's going? Exactly. So like, solid... Relays traditionally are, uh, they have a solenoid in them, an yeah. electromagnet that closes a circuit. Mm -hmm. But uh, more recently, in the, in, they have made solid <clears throat> state relays, which are completely semiconductor driven. Cool. They have all the same benefits, being isolated. Uh, they actually have a lot more longevity, so they don't uh, break after a long time, mm -hmm. and they switch much faster. Are they more expensive or about the same? I or? guess traditionally they were much more expensive. They were like this could have cost a hundred dollars not too long ago. I got this for nine dollars. <laughs> so thanks, well, you can't beat that. Thanks, China. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we will basically. This could take a ton of voltage too. It can take up to four hundred eighty volts. Wow. I mean, yeah, that's more Which than is, my electric car so this uses, is, right? This is uh, way more than we need. Yeah, no, we're just going to use 120, and we're not even going to use a full amp. So we're fine without any kind of heat sink. Uh, this is going to take, we're running like 30-watt bulbs, so we're talking a, a quarter amp. Right. Um, 
So we will use one relay for each of the <clears throat> lights. Okay. Right. Got it. And what I would love your help with is creating like a uh, a box. To yeah, something has it all in because, and then mount them. Exactly, because okay. we're talking about high voltage, we want to be very safe. This is going to be in a public place. It's going to be behind the game, but nonetheless, but still, it should be sealed. we want it to be all nice and sealed up. Okay. So yeah, we'll take AC wall out voltage. Got it. So uh, we got we'll, a standard, looks like standard computer plug type setup. Yeah, exactly. And we'll run that um, to all of the components. And then, okay. so we'll run into the input of all the relays, and then we'll run wires from the computer from the pinball game to trigger the relays. And that we'll sounds cool. Use one of these as a junction box for so our, our grounds and things. Ties into there, and then it'll have an on-off switch, I assume. Yeah. So and we'll then, just uh, put this in series with uh, one and of the wires. What, is there going to be like a, a connector coming from the pinball machine, or like what? What will that? Is there like yeah. a, something for that? Yeah. I, I'll probably do that as some sort of like Molex connector. Got it. Uh, so if there's just a hole for some wires to come in and out, we'll do that with Molex connectors. That very straightforward. Uh, I'm I'm happy to help uh, and and take a trip to pinball. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun, right? <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. I think this is going to be really cool. I don't think anyone's ever done this kind of mod to a getaway before. No, this is awesome. All right, cool. Yeah. So um, I'll see you in a couple weeks at the pinball. Absolutely. Arcade. Yeah. All right. Welcome to Free Gold Watch. We're, we're shooting on location. This is very exciting. This is one of my favorite places in the world. We're at Free Gold Watch in the Haight-Ashbury district of San Francisco. Uh, this is a pinball arcade. It's also a print shop. I knew this. <laughs> yeah. That's like all in one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've been coming here for years, and uh, so I know the owner pretty well. And so he had this stoplight, as I mentioned, which is right behind us. Yeah. It's an antique stoplight. It says GE on it. Um, we don't know much about where it came from, but it's an, it's an antique. Seems like it's from maybe the 50s or 60s. Right. Um, and he mounted it to this pole and, yep. and the base, and he just has it wired up to 110 volts AC off the wall. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do is, is make that controllable by the pinball machine. This guy right here. Right here. This getaway. is high speed to the getaway, nice. uh, which has a stoplight in it. And the, so the trick is to make each of those lights in the stoplight control each of these lights in the real stoplight. Right. So I brought, uh, so this is a funny story. I actually started 3D modeling this. Yeah, yeah. So I did, I, uh, as we've discussed before, like whenever I, you, you gave me all these components. So I did 3D versions of all these to figure out like how they need to fit in the box. This is the best 3D thing. print I've ever well, seen. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Sometimes it's not always the best way. Like right. I got about, I got like all of these mod and I'm laying out the box. I'm like, I think I may be reinventing the wheel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I hear you. I had this case just laying around and everything kind of just fit nicely in it. A little bit of Dremel work. Yep. And I think this is going to work. What do you think? So we it looks, have- looks great to me. Yeah. So we got, we got the on off on that. We got the AC in. Yep. We just need to drill holes for the wires coming in. I didn't know for, where for okay. sure those would go. So all of but, the relays, yeah. they mount to the bottom? Yeah. I left great. them loose for now so that we can figure out the wiring. Okay, cool. And then once we do, they, they get uh, screwed in and locked tight so they're not going anywhere. This is a project box? Is that what, what I mean, you can buy it's, these I, in any different size. Yeah, I think it's like a parts bin. Yeah, but you okay. can get like an official you know, project box. This right. is just like a parts bin. This is a perfect use for this box. I think it'll work. Right and now. I like that it's accessible like this. Yeah. Cool. So I think the first step is going to be to test out these relays and see if they actually, you know, yeah, I've never done this before. Solid this is thing. high voltage too. So <laughs> we, let's be careful. Okay. Uh, but we want to test out one of these relays by hooking up the AC to one of these terminals. Okay. And see. And see run it through it. to the one of the lights. Yeah. 
maybe all the lights to test it. I'm not sure. And then we'll just, uh, we'll trigger it with a nine volt battery. Okay. And we'll see if it works. Because you said it needs it can just use a low voltage to actually trigger the the switch mechanism. Exactly. It can take three to thirty two volts as the cool. trigger. All right. And then it powers hundred up to four hundred eighty, but you know one hundred twenty volts AC for us. Okay. All right. Awesome. What's the light? Uh, what's positive here? So this is negative. Cool. Nice. All right, so that's triggering the relay. Now, so as long as it just gets a voltage in that area, it triggers it. Yeah. Nice. So, ready? Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna plug in the stoplight. Okay. And you're gonna hold that. <laughs> I'm gonna plug this in, and uh, you just keep your like. There's gonna be high voltage going through don't that. Don't touch that. Yeah, okay. Don't touch the terminals. Yeah, just don't touch the terminals. Ready? All right, here we go. All right, no sparks yet. No magic smoke. Right. Yeah, so yeah. you have one leg of the electricity going through here, right. and then as long as you get a, a, a voltage of three to 32 volts on this, mm -hmm. it'll trigger the switch. That's right, and these All are right. completely isolated. Okay. So this should not shock me. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Oh yeah. All right, let's see. All right, so this is this is negative. <laughs> Here we go. This should trigger the relay. Boom! Whoa, nice. I would call that a success. All right. That's cool. Look at that, how they go on in sequence. That's weird. So the yellow goes on last for some reason. It just takes longer to warm up. That seems successful. I'm happy with that. That's the best it's, news. Now, do you, is there, when you're doing this kind of thing, does it matter if you're on the positive or the negative or the neutral? Uh, or just, I don't think so. Yeah. No, it's so, AC, so they're just both sending stuff one at a time, and you know, as long as you break this circuit, you're, it's gonna be off. Cool. Connect it, you're good. So now we're gonna, we're gonna run wire from this, from all the three lights, yep. to our box, and then to the pinball machine. Yeah, we're gonna run. We're gonna actually run cable from this whole mess here okay. down the shaft. One for each bulb. Right. One signal wire. We're okay. gonna do a common ground. Okay. Or we're calling it ground. Yeah. And it's gonna go down here, and then we're gonna hook up our relays and hook the wires up in your box. And unlike our other projects, there's no Arduino, Raspberry Pi, anything involved. This is just pretty much old school. This is pinball logic. <laughs> okay. Relays. Awesome. All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. Here and then and stop. All right. Good. Good. Yep. Cool. We're doing fat wire. Yeah. Okay, so we got everything wired up to the lights. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't too bad. We have five coming out. You had the brilliant idea of actually now incorporating ground. Yeah, there is no ground hooked up in there. So for those who don't know, the ground is a safety. So yeah. it gets attached to like the general metal housing somewhere so that if you do get a loose wire and it touches this, you're not gonna get zapped. It, it should it should return it to ground. To the earth, to yeah. literally the ground. Yeah. So we, we went ahead and it was easy to do. We just attached it to one of the, the bolts that are holding us together. Yeah. So it'll just be a little extra safety precaution. Right, so we're, it's better than it was when we got here. Yes. Excellent. Do we also have uh, a common uh, neutral wire, yep. and, and then we have three individual signal wires for each of the actual bulbs, and they're color coded. Yeah. So we, we should know which, which is which. And we're actually going to chop the plug, right? So that we yeah. can take these wires and run them in the box. Exactly. Okay. So the three inside here, and then we have these two, total of five. And next thing, let's hook it all, all up to your awesome project box. All right. Okay. Let's do it. So if I drill like a hole right here. Yep. Okay. And then you want us to do the opposite hole for the signal wires from the pinball machine while you're at it? We'll just have those come in from the other side? Yeah, like here maybe? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll go in, yep. and then we'll run a cable tie in cable tied here for strain relief. Good idea. So it doesn't get yanked out or anything. All right. 
But we'll do that last. Okay. <laughs> so like that, and then uh, yeah, got one there. So we're gonna need some cables coming out of our box there to connect to the pinball machine. And I wanna make that modular so that you can detach the pinball machine from the box. So I'm gonna create three different connectors, one for each light um, that connects uh, both signals from each of the stoplights in the machine to each of these stoplights, or relays rather, in our, uh, in our box. They look like this, and I'm just getting those ready. Little crimp connectors, uh, Molex connectors. And um, then we're gonna put this into the box. All right, so I got these connectors to uh, connect yeah. the pinball game to the magic box. I like that you actually, so we can unhook it if yeah. need be. You know, you never know. Plan mm -hmm. for the future. Yep. Um, so we got one for red, one for green, and one for blue. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Didn't have yellow. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to strip, what do you think, like a half an inch, quarter inch, so? From each yeah. of these? Three eighths. Three. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and so. Then, Black would go, we're gonna go the negative and then uh, positive we'll use for the yeah. extra color. Sounds good. And then we'll figure out the, the uh, you know the correct wiring once we get into that stoplight. Right. All right. Great. Sounds good. Alright, I'll hand these to you. I'll strip right. the rest of these. Cool. Alright. Alright, how do you feel? Good. I, I'm liking how this is looking. These are not uh, screwed into the case right now. Okay. Just until we test. Them. But all the wires are sealed? Yeah, and I, right. I gave them the tug test, they're all good. We got the switch tied in, and I put a cable tie oh, here good, for good. strain relief. We'll do the same for these when we're done. Okay, so should we give it some AC power and see what happens? <laughs> okay. Right. So it's currently off. It is. All right. All right. All right. So how are we testing it? I have, well, we have these three cables coming out, one for each of the three stoplights. Yeah. And I have a tester cable around here somewhere. Did I bring it with me or is it over there somewhere? This yeah, that's, that's the one. Oh, we're going to use it? Oh, we're going to trigger yeah. it with a nine volt? Yeah, why not? <laughs> so first of all, let's go ahead and, and flip it on and make sure that that works. Nothing is good. No news is good news at this point. All right. So nothing's let's, melting. Let's start with green. And uh, that's I love in there. you can trigger this with a nine volt. Yeah, well, all right. well we shall see. <laughs> nice. I can't believe it worked. So we got our, our little, you know, I actually kind of like we got the clear top so we can actually see what's going okay. on inside. So uh, here, switch, switch me over to uh, blue. All right. AKA yellow. Yeah, yeah don't get a, these are not color coded properly, here. just so you know. Are we in? Yeah. Huzzah. All right, looking and good. And final test, red. Very cool. Ow, what's going on there? There we are. Wonder why that's, no, it's fine. It was probably me. Your, your, your meaty hands. Look at that, it's like, that's when the stoplight, you know, loses its contact with the mothership. Yeah, yeah. Nice. All uh, right. So now we get we get to open this thing, don't we? And I assume your power switch works. I'm just going to test that just for kicks. Yeah, no good. Very good. So cool. the next step is to open up the pinball machine, get into this miniature stoplight, and run right. six more wires Looks like this. I've been super excited about this. <laughs> this is this is the best part. Opening the game. Yeah, I, right, great. I've, you don't get to see inside this stuff no, too it's much. It's funny. So. Whenever you open the game around here, regular players they just stop and they look because they've never seen this before. Oh, we gotta take out the glass. Yep. And this, these are these get shattered. I've never shattered them, but supposedly if you set them down gently at the wrong angle, <laughs> everywhere. We're missing a ball, folks. I don't hear it. There nope. it is. <laughs> uh, we'll get that later. I'd, I'd heard that this game had a problem Whoa. with that. That's This is cool. Oh, no way. It even has the service manual, I assume. Yeah. So what year is this, like 95? 
Does it even say? 92. 92. Nice. Really? Service manual. I don't know about that. All right. All right. Jeremy, what? All right. There's a miles of wiring here. Yep. Uh, what are we looking at here? Like, what are these guys? That's a solenoid. Nice. Yeah, so it's for... electromagnet. So there's not a single motor underneath the play field. It's yeah. all done by a magnet. It's electromagnets called solenoids. Right. And they, they have these shafts that are basically connected to your flippers or your slings or any kind of thing in there that hits the ball. Yeah. And it gets sucked in really quickly. <laughs> and then that hits the ball. And then uh, are these like the bumpers here? Uh, that, that, let's take a look. That looks like, yeah, it looks like the jets. Yep, yep, bumpers. So and on those, yep, these would be your flippers. Just a different up here. type of solenoid? Uh, different power. Yeah. yeah, so you see the big ones are, are the flippers. Yeah. They have the most power. Uh, this is, uh, is that an upper flipper? Uh, yep. 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 So, so we, we're, this is like a 90s, 1990s yep. era pinball machine. I'm guessing that as you even go back further, there's even more and more wiring and more and more mechanics, and well, or is it pretty no, consistent? I mean, it's actually, it, they got a little less as you go back because they weren't as complex. Like, they had to make them more and more interesting for people to play them. Ah. In the 90s, they kind of peaked in terms of complexity. Went crazy. Yes. So if we opened up, like, you just got the Star Wars pinball, right. the new one. If we opened that up, is it just like one big circuit board? <laughs> it's funny, like, literally the back of this game, that entire head, like this area, yeah. of this game is all circuit boards. Yeah. Yeah. With the new Sterns, it's about that big. Like, that's it for the entire motherboard. I, and I'm assuming there's probably, like, there's still wiring, but a lot less of it. Much less of it, because they actually use Ethernet now to connect one node board to another node right. board. It's much more modern. And then are they using still, like, this, like, the solenoids, oh, yeah. or is it something fancy nope, and new? Like... it's still solenoids. Okay. Yep, it's, uh, except it's all LEDs now. These are, this was built for incandescence. This has been replaced with LEDs. Oh, uh, that would, I could see that makes sense. Um, yeah. But the LEDs, the lights that we want access to are around here somewhere. Um, yeah, the stoplight's like right stop here. Light. I'm guessing it might be this. I see a lot of wires coming here. That seems like a really good bet because it's right on top of it. So. I actually have not tried this yet. Did they just go out? Yep. All right, so that's, it doesn't really help us. We gotta look at those lights and see exactly what's connected to the Do you think we're light. gonna have to tear off the, uh, the Stop light at all? Or? Yeah. yeah. Let's all right. get inside that. That was the easiest thing to remove in the history of pinball. What I'm seeing here on the back of our stoplight is there is a common. All three of the left sides are all connected, or okay. right sides rather. Yeah. And then there's unique signal cables for, for each of the three. So we actually only need to run four cables, which means we might rethink our connectors at the other end. Okay. We might just split them apart. But uh, yeah, this simplifies the wiring going out. Uh, well, so that's, that's a good thing then, I guess. Yeah, it is a good thing. So the reason that I thought that was weird that they shared a, a, a common connection, all three of the lights, was because these lights are actually on a matrix inside of here. So this board controls all the lights on the play field, all 64 control lamps, but it only turns on eight at a time using a matrix. So you've got rows and columns, and it turns on one column at a time, and it grounds whichever row. You know, it wants from eight lights per column. Only eight lights are on, on the play field at one time, and it pulses them 60 times a second. So what this tells me is that each of these lights is on share a column or a row, probably a column, and then they get pulsed individually. They're on different rows. Um, so that's, that's interesting. Um, it also means because these lights are on the switch matrix that our signal wires will be, will be pulsed 60 times a second. And that means either this stoplight will be dim because the, um, the relay will also pulse the AC at that amount, or maybe it won't work at all, or maybe it'll be just as bright as it was before because I have never messed with AC before. So we'll find out. Uh, there's a chance we may need to make an adjustment in order to convert this pulsing to actual DC. feed all this into a hole here. That's the problem. 
Can I preemptively put a uh, heat shrink on this to kind of wrangle it in? Okay. I think that's got it. Keep going, keep going, good. Stop. All right. You can hand me the screwdriver, I'll screw in the light. Uh, I can lower this okay. down. Okay. Still working? That's a good sign. Yeah. All right, so let's lift the play field and find an exit for our cables. Oh, do you, oh yeah, we can fit right through that. Yeah. Okay, so we have our wires run from the, the miniature stoplight. And it's still working. What we, that's a good sign. What we have to do now is find out what's sending voltage and what's ground. Is it is the common the voltage or right. is the common the ground? So that's what we're gonna connect uh, the common wire and one of the signal wires to a multimeter and find out which, right. which way is positive. All right. Let's see here. Negative. So, yep, it looks so, like that's the common. The right? common is the voltage. Interesting. Is that going to cause us any problems? Nope. Hey. Nice. So, All right, so it's flashing. Is that good? That's good. That means that the <laughs> matrix is enough to trigger it. Okay, good. So that's good. Now, I'm just curious to see does it actually turn on the stoplight? All right, is it relatively safe for us to fire that up while you're there? <laughs> Relatively, yes. Go ahead, hit it. Oh, it's every now and then. That's interesting. It's just because it's turning it on and off so quickly. Yeah. But I'll bet if we start a game and the green light stays on, it's on its regular. Let's try pattern. it. Let's All try right. it. Ah, uh, that's the matrix. That's the pulse width. So it's sending that 60 pulses a second. <laughs> so it doesn't know to stay on. So the uh, so the pinball machine is pulsing uh, the signal, which is fine for that setup, but right. not for this. Right. So uh, is that uh, particular to like because it's LEDs now, or that's just no, how it was always? No, that's how it always was. Like with incandescence, you can't even tell. With LEDs, they actually do flicker. Yeah. You just can't see it. So. Uh, would it make any difference if we had regular relays versus the solid state? I think if we had regular relays, we hear this click, 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 click. <laughs> you know, it'd be going crazy. All right. Um, so what I have here is a, is a resistor capacitor circuit okay. that should convert this pulse width to DC. Because it's gonna, so the capacitor is gonna store some. Exactly. So it makes a buffer. That's right. So it overcomes that pulse. Right, because okay. it, you know, it's 60 times a second. So hopefully it'll keep that just long enough in you order were to fill the gaps. Ahead, obviously. I, I did. I thought about this, and I and I talked to a, to an engineer friend of mine. He said this might do the trick. So okay, good, good. we'll see. So now we have your capacitor resistor hookup. Yes. Don't electrocute yourself. <laughs> All right. So now we're back to like correct coloring too. Right. Can can I hold part of that? No. All right. Well, that's relatively low vo voltage though, right? That's weird. Yeah. Nothing, huh? Huh, nope. Yep. Yeah. Damn. We have a big fat red light. <laughs> exactly, well put. It was going so well. Yes, too well. Well, the, the problem is this this matrix, this matrix that controls all the lamps in the game. Right. It's uh, it's complicated the problem, and this cool little circuit that I had just didn't do the trick. Okay. Uh, we're just not getting enough voltage from this in order to trigger the solid the, state the, relays. The relays need a certain amount of voltage to trigger them, and we're just not. Yeah, we're just not there. Yeah. So this stoplight is not turning all the way on all the, when it's supposed to. Um, then we messed around with some wires and we swapped some things yeah. and we, we got it to stay on more But then this doesn't then, then ever go off. Work right. Yeah, so it's just not working and we're, we're turning left or turning right 
So I think I need to spend some time with the troubleshooting with the schematics uh, figure out a better way to do this I even I think given what we know mm -hmm. we can find a way to make this work we just need a little more time we just need a, a little more hardware and a little more time and we'll come back to this this will get finished oh yeah absolutely and it'll be interesting it's a learning process for everybody and it'll yeah. be like this is the, was the solution for this exactly so and for you good. it will be instantaneous <laughs> magic <laughs> yeah so all right so we'll You'll go back to the drawing right. board. Yes. And uh, we'll be back to, to finish this up. So we'll be back in a minute. All right. I'm going to go right now. <laughs> it's working. Thank God. Uh, I, I really feel like I did a lot on this. So, <laughs> uh, so you have to. Oh my God, dude. The past few days, I have been in hell. <laughs> Because this thing, I'm telling you, I did not expect it to be this hard. Figure, look, we got lights. Uh, we, we can see when the lights are on. I, that's been par for the course for most of our projects. Isn't so that far. true? <laughs> you know, we never claimed to know what we were doing. Oh. I, I ended up doing two things, All which right. seem insane to me. Like, I know there must be a way to do this with fewer components, but I just, I ended up doing the unthinkable. And I added an Arduino. <laughs> I, like, we were so proud. I was so proud that like, it's so simple. I know. Right, that, right. It's pinball logic. It's yeah. just, just relays. But no, so, I added not only an Arduino, basically to act as a as like a smart relay. Okay. But I also added something called an opto isolator. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So what? Okay. So yeah. what is all this doing then? Okay. So <laughs> when you left, we didn't have this white circuit board. No. This is this is new. So these black things are called opto isolators, and they're basically taking the signal from those lights, okay. and they're cleaning it up. They're getting rid of the negative voltage essentially, and they're they're making it like either on or off just constantly, rather than being just crazy. Okay. It's basically each of these has a little LED inside of it, really, that gets charged by that when it receives proper positive signal, and then there's a receiver on the other side that isolates the two circuits entirely. It's so it's it's an opto isolator. Pretty Literally what it is. Exactly. So, so here's a quick question. So I'm an I'm electronics novice. Yeah. How do you figure out that you need an opto isolator? Uh, <laughs> you call an you call an expert. Okay. Right? And so friend of the show, Zach Ratting, was on call for this project. Okay. And he said what you need is an opto isolator. And you're like, oh what? <laughs> exactly, okay. Exactly, exactly. All right. That so, makes me feel better when you don't even Thankfully, know. <laughs> also Amazon Prime, very handy for opto isolators. Really? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that cleans up the signal. Uh, that gets pushed over here to what I was hoping would be like a clean path to our relays. Right. Because it is more or less cleaned up at that point. The problem is that um, while the negative voltages were gone and the grounding errors were gone, uh -huh. it actually, at this point, now I'm dealing with the, the pulse width modulation problem. Okay. Um, and so that, that's what I was showing you before. So let me just show you on this oscilloscope. Yeah, I know, things got serious. We got an oscilloscope out now. So. Yeah, I had to. So th <laughs> this is actually what the signal, that green light is on, as you can right. see. Solid now, green. Solid green. The, the appearing solid exactly. green. Exactly. But if, yeah. if we take a look at the signal, oh. it's, it's actually fluctuating, right? Yep. Now. These capacitors were supposed to handle that, and they just wouldn't. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why, for whatever reason. I don't know if it's the, the amount of voltage or if, if it's, I don't know what it is. Right, right. The point is, I fiddled with it. I tried different capacitor ratings. I tried different <laughs> resistor ratings. I tried different circuits. It just would not stay on as much as I needed for the relays to respect, you know, right. solid on. So. I abandoned the capacitors. I went straight from the opto isolator into uh, we got my, my old friend. Like I and I got to tell you, I'm so happy that I added this. Yeah. Because not only was this then able the Arduino mm -hmm. able to take these uh, these pulses, I was act, I was then also able to eliminate some false positives that arose. Oh, interesting. Because in my testing at home, I didn't run into these false positives. Like the, the light was either on or off. Or yeah. Off. Yeah. But here. It gets weird when you light the the green light. Uh, the yellow light start, is is uh, primed to be to be um, lit. Uh -huh. When you lock a ball, it does get lit. But then, like the the red light, like starts doing this phantom flickering thing that you can't see. <laughs> but it's like just these like microsecond so pulses of voltage that was causing this to, to say, "Oh, it's on." Uh -huh. So I needed the Arduino in order to say, "Ignore short pulses," right? And in fact, only listen to voltage to pulses that are of a certain length, 
So you have to weed out the, exactly. the extraneous stuff. Yeah, weeding is the excellent so, analogy. So, so our very simple project ballooned. <laughs> yeah, it did, and it's just it just seems silly to me. I mean, if if the relays, these solid state relays that we have here, yeah. had any kind of like a dial that said only accept you know voltages or signals that last a certain length uh -huh. or you know, compensate for pulsing or things like that. Maybe they sell them. I'm sure they're not nine dollars. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you think uh, uh, if you were using traditional mechanical relays, it would have made the it, it made the problem even worse? Or well, I think we probably it would have been a lot noisier. Okay. Because whenever these things were pulsing, you would have heard it. Oh, cl um, cl 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 yeah. the, the clack of relays. Which yeah. maybe would have illustrated that there was a problem, because <laughs> we couldn't tell half what? of what was wrong when we right. were here last time, because right. this LED was on, and it just kind of looks like it's working. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't. Okay. In any case, um, it's now working 100%. I can, I can show you the other side of the circuit real quick. Um, if I go to my relay, go to my ground and go to my positive, we got solid on, right? Which is what you want. Which to is see. what I yeah. want. So now the relay is perfectly happy. I've got code over here where I can adjust like the thresholds for right. things. Right. And it even waits, like the one thing that I certainly couldn't have done before was actually detect when it's idle and then done something else. So now what I do is if the game's not in use after five or 10 minutes, whatever I want, uh, it just turns the stoplights on. You know that that makes a lot of sense because these these in the, its rest state are flicking on and off constantly. That exactly. would get really annoying. Yes, that was one thing the owner here didn't want was a strobe light effect unless he was having a house party. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So in in the long run, that that added a few features that we didn't have before. Anyway. Exactly, exactly. And and it lends itself to more. Like now, I'm thinking, what if you got a jackpot? It would be cool if <laughs> if you got like some cool sequence up That's, there. That would require tying into other LEDs yeah. because the stoplight isn't. No, did you have to do any additional rewiring on the light from what we already did, or you, the uh, wiring on there is still the same? The wiring on the light is the same. I did have to find voltage for the Arduino, mm -hmm. so I tapped into a 12 volt line Friendly. and I ran that into the uh, barrel jack. The Arduino has a range; it can go from what, like five volts to it likes five to 12, I think. Okay, I'm actually running 13. So. We're pushing Probably, it, right. but we'll I think see. I'm all right. I'm actually not using that much current from the Arduino, so I think it's going to be okay. Okay. And you were saying earlier, it, with this kind of stuff, there, there are multiple different solutions. This is it, this is one of them <laughs> with the tools that you you know how to use. Yeah, this is sort of the one that, that I found. Like it would, I'm not. There's got to be a simpler way, and I know that we have viewers out there with much more electronics expertise than I have, and I would love to hear their opinions. I just got to say. Maybe don't trust your first instincts because, as, <laughs> as I found out, the voltages on this matrix are crazy. Yeah. So, who knew? Yeah, it's, it was definitely, I was so glad to find a solution, even if it required three layers of <laughs> complexity. Excellent. Uh, so, should we get it a try? You I would love to see this. All right, yeah. let's try it out. Here we go. Nice. Nice. Oh, yeah. 